Hi, David Bizard here, and you are watching Paratech 10. If you could give me a few minutes of your time, 10 or 20 maybe, I can give you the benefit of what is now over 64 years of race winning and performance engine building. So stay tuned. So what's our subject material for this issue, which will be, oh. I'll put it across the bottom, right? see if I got that right. What we're going to do here is we are going to build what I loosely call a cocktail engine. Now this is going to be done by the two Daves. That's Dave McLean and uh, this Dave. Now because actually I'm old enough that I should be called David not Dave or it employs youth and spirit and things like this. Well Dave McLean's got that right I, I i think he's like 50 going on 20 but anyway and that's another point there's a stack of stuff left over from testing now not all the tests not by a long shot are done on the dyno i mean sometimes i make up fixtures and things like this to test one particular aspect like for my production racer, I made up a fixture that I could take along to the factory, dig in their box of rockers, and check the ratio of every rocker at 10 thousandths lift and full lift on the camshaft to see what they delivered in terms of lift. Well, they were supposed to be 390, but I, I managed to get plenty of lifters which would deliver just a shade over 400. Had they said that's uh, not legal. Like I said, you try and find any of those parts that are out of tolerance, right? So anyway, what we're doing is we're collecting all the parts we've got. We've got a whole lot of rockers uh, and it's for a small block Ford. We have got pistons. We just don't have a matching set. We have got some rods for this. Uh, of course, we've got a block. We've got some heads. The two heads that we're going to put on there aren't the same, right? Both are good heads. Um, but we've contacted Mike Jones here, and he is going to do a cam which suits as far as possible the spec of every cylinder. And what we're calling this engine is the cocktail engine. Now, how well do we expect it to go? I'm going to look at it this way. Even if we used all stock parts, uh, except we raised the compression ratio and ported the head or heads, it would make big horsepower. If we used all the best parts, it would make bigger horsepower, right? So our cocktail engine should fall between good horsepower and very good. And the beauty of it is most of these parts we won't have to pay for. We already have them, right? So let's get with it. First off the block, and I'll let Dave take it from here. Whenever we build a performance engine, we try to do what we can to make sure that all the parts we use are the same as much as possible. The same length rods, the same pistons, the same cam lobes, the same valves, all these things. But what if we have a bunch of good used parts, ones that are perfectly fine, but they're not all the same. How much difference does it really make in horsepower? We're going to find out. We've got a name for this build, the cocktail motor. This evening for a bit of fun, I decided to bring the uh, small block Ford block that's going to be used for the uh, cocktail engine build home and put it in my honing machine just to do a little bit of experimentation on the cylinders. I have my gauge set at four inches five thousandths nominal and right now the cylinder is about oh three under that at the bottom and about oh one and a half under that at the top. What I'm going to do is use my Sun and Diamond honing head to hone the cylinder to a nominal 
size of maybe five thousandths over and hone it to, to get it as round as I possibly can. The gasket that I'm using for this test is a stock replacement Felpro gasket. Now I've got my well-worn Goodson torque plate attached. I know I'm just using four bolts right around the cylinder we're testing because I forgot to bring all my 7 16 head bolt washers home with me. But anyway, to give you an idea, we'll check in the same basic place in the cylinder where we tested before. And right now, our size is about two tenths pulled in on the thrust in the thrust direction. If we go non-thrust, we look uh, about the same probably. Not a whole lot of difference. But if we go in line with the head bolt, now all of a sudden we're out around about eight tenths. Let's go the other direction. Really, we're out close to a thousandth in that direction. So the torque plate really does make a difference on these lightweight 5-liter cases. Anyway, I thought you'd find that interesting. Literally, as we speak, Dave is finishing off the uh, detailing of the block. He'll probably have filmed that, assuming his wife's there to film it. But... What I'm going to do here is round off what we need to know about the start of this project. First, the next issue, Dave will be showing how he finishes the block off in a gorgeous blue paint. I'm going to show you a block my daughter did for me when she was about 15. Well, here's our block. Jackie has just finished painting this in a gorgeous metallic blue. This shot here shows what the block looked like finished, but this isn't the one. This one's painted in just a regular blue. Imagine this in a metallic blue, and you'll get the idea of what the finished block looked like. This was a 331 build, and she notched where the rods had to go, deflashed the block, primed it, painted it, and that engine made... It was a 331, I think it made, on the dyno. Now, I built the rest of it. Uh, that was about 530-odd horsepower. But anyway, but one thing I do want to point out is the caliber of finish that we're going to put on this engine because that's an important uh, issue. First, let me establish how many horsepower we're shooting for. Over 400. I would think... We'll probably send this motor out with around about 425 odd horsepower and an RPM capability of 7500 RPM. This means that though they may be assorted, the parts that go into it have to be now, good. Right? It could be that it's a 331. I'm going to see if a certain crankshaft company will donate a three and a quarter inch stroke crank for this, in which case we could be looking at something near 485 horsepower and a pretty big torque output, right? Enough to whoop any 351. No sweat. Now, let's see what we're short of. <clears throat> we don't have enough pistons. We've got three pistons at the moment. Two are for a 5.09 rod and one is for a 5.4 rod with a stock stroke. Now, if we get a stroker crank, we're going to have to round up pistons. But I'll let you know on that. We're not short of heads. I've got a pair of heads here that have been ported. They're not the same. One's a 289 head. The other is a E7TE head. I think I got that right. Both of them flow a lot of air. Both have been a pair of heads that have been dyno tested. And then uh, one head's gone to replace a cracked one or something like that. But nonetheless... It's got two heads, different design, but dyno proven to be able to make horsepower big time, big time and to be able to let the engine run down to low RPM. The intake manifold is almost certainly going to be a two-plane item 
and it's probably going to be the Performer RPM Air Jam. Uh, distributor, well, I'm thinking that I'm going to put one of my favorite distributors into this, right? And that is one from Performance Distributors. It's an HEI. I like this because although I designed electronic circuits, believe it or not, I have wiring dyslexia. If I leave the, a design of electronic circuit that I've done for more than a couple of months, I cannot read the wiring on it. And it was my design, right? So I like these HEI ones. One wire to connect up. I mean, not even a klutz like me can go wrong with that. And here's the thing. I've been using performance distributors now for more years than I can think of. Well over 30. Never had a problem. Not once. So exactly what is in the future for this build? Well, actually, it's all about St. Jude's. About sometime early May, I had a uh, one of those um, evening get-togethers, which was, of course, live on YouTube. And we collected, in two hours, $1,500 for St. Jude's. The plan with this engine is that we are going to take out our personal expenses out of it, rock bottom ones. I'm taking about 500 bucks out for the pair of heads and other stuff, right? And mostly that's materials I use to grind it and expenses I've got in it and valve guides and all that. Dave is taking out the cost of any parts he's had to buy, plus the cost of a basic engine build because he's so busy that it has cost him already, already if he builds this engine he's had to deny having a customer so although it's an exotic build he's only charging a basic rebuild so we're just going to take out our particular expenses out of this right no profit for us at all in fact i know i'm going to make a loss of 500 bucks out of it but the engine will be for sale, right? And I think we're going to do it as the best bidder. But also, we are going to have an opening day for the new uh, shop, which I've been spending the COVID-19 era redoing here. Now, that should be sometime towards about July, for beginning of July. And what we will be doing then is taking donations for St. Jude's. For now, this is the end of the video. Please like, subscribe, notify, share, and you can, any money you donate on that thanks button, that will go to St. Jude's. Thank, thank you for watching.